Hi, I'm Laura and I'm a member of Hampton Baptist Church. For today's devotional, I'd like to focus on a passage that's helped me time and time again. It's a well-known passage and comes from Psalm 46 verse 10 which reads, Be still and know that I am God. But to give us some context, let's read all of Psalm 46 from beginning to end. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns, the nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in all the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Psalm 46 talks about the city of God, a place which is located within the presence of God. At the heart of the psalm is a theme of security, that God is our true home. Throughout the 11 verses, we also read several descriptions about God, his characteristics and attributes. He is our refuge. He is strong, present, a great help to those who are weak. God is higher than all else and able to rule above all. At his voice, the earth melts. We read, this is the God of Jacob. He is with believers and he is exalted among the nations and in the earth. He is a fortress and protects the weak that belong to him. The psalmist is probably living through some sort of turmoil or war as he mentions the phrases war and trouble. Though the psalm is also pointing forward to a future when wars will cease. It is clear by the end of the psalm that warring against God is always in vain and the people of God who are protected by their mighty fortress have nothing to fear. In verses 2 and 3 the waters are a source of turmoil as they rage against the earth and swallow the mountains. However, in verse 4 the water becomes a source of joy and gladness. The point here is that God's presence changes everything, which brings us to our passage for today, Be still and know that I am God. Now let's break down the verse into three sections. Firstly, be still. Many people tend to think this verse means to rest or relax in who God is, but verse 10 is actually more of a wake-up call, to be in awe than a gentle call to rest. Instead of interpreting be still as a gentle suggestion, the meaning of this psalm lends itself more to cease striving or stop and more specifically in the context, stop fighting, which is directly towards the enemies of the people of God. The people of God should interpret the command for themselves to read more like, snap out of it, wake up, stop fearing, acknowledge who your God is, be in awe. However, it is good to note there's nothing wrong with the words in the translation, be still. Those words are not incorrect. It is simply helpful to note the context of the phrase. Secondly, a no. The next command, no, is the same in many translations, which lends itself in this context to mean acknowledge and be in awe. God will make sure his name is glorified among the nations and in all the earth. Knowing God in this context means acknowledging and committing to the fact that God is the only refuge worth running towards. The only refuge that will stand strong through every circumstance. Thirdly, that I am God. Why is it significant that he is God? Who is God? Well, God is holy. God is majestic. God is the ruler of all. God is the defender of his own name, his people and his word. He alone is our protector, the sovereign ruler and the everlasting refuge. His actions are not hindered by our fear and worrying or distracted minds. God is God alone and he will protect those who believe in his name and trust in him. Let's remind ourselves during this time that God's voice has power over all. God used his voice to create the universe, the earth and everything in it, including us. 
he uses his voice to accomplish his glory and protect his people victoriously. He will put an end to all wars, diseases, destruction, sin and death and at the end of the age by using his voice. This is something to be still and stand in awe of. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you humbly as your people in difficult and challenging times. Despite this, we will be still and know that you are God. We will stop. We will stand in awe of you and your mighty works. We will not fear in times of trouble because we know that you are God and that you are with us and one day we will triumph with you over all pain and suffering. Lord, continue to give us hope until that day. Challenge us to live as your people in the midst of suffering and grant us grace and peace as we place ourselves in you through Christ. In your worthy name, Jesus, by which all is possible. Amen. Thank you for joining with us today. Have a blessed day. Good morning. My name is Jack Aitken. And thank you for allowing me the privilege of speaking into your home this morning. The restrictions that have been placed on us these days are so difficult to accept. Oh, how I miss being able to pop out for a wee coffee and a scone. But I understand why it is there and the government are looking after us all. Modern days have made it a whole lot easier for us to accept. We have mobile phones, iPads, computers. We can keep in touch with our family and friends and we can call them or text them or FaceTime them. We can even Zoom them. We can see their faces and hear their voices and see how they are all looking. And this is very special, especially with the wee ones. This brings us comfort. But we also have a Bible which has 365 little statements. Fear not. Two little words that don't mean much on their own, but when together God says, Fear not. I will never leave you nor forsake you, then that means a lot. And to those of us who have trusted Christ as our Saviour, we claim this promise on a daily basis. We are not alone. God is in our heart. God is in our home, giving us blessings upon blessings and love beyond measure. The psalmist David says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. I trust that this will be your experience at this time in all of our lives. God bless and goodbye. Good morning, my name is Ruth Murray and I would like to share a devotion with you this morning from Psalm 34 which has been both a blessing and a challenge to me this week. So it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. 
Who is man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his eyes are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. He guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. As I said earlier, this has been both a blessing and a challenge, as I've been reminded of this psalm this week. And the challenge for me is uh, in verse 1 where it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And I I needed a, a reminder of that. And it's been a challenge, certainly, in this week. And reading down in the verse, it says, uh, in verse 9, O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, there is no want to those who fear him. And even in verse 7, the, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. And obviously in this time, which we find ourselves in just now with the coronavirus, there is a lot of fear about. Um, I'm a support worker with adults with learning difficulties and I work in the community normally. But unfortunately at this time there is no community because everywhere is closed and shut. So I have been posted into one of our um, small residential homes and that in itself brings another fear um, to be in a care home um, at this time. And also, as many of you all know, Ian, my husband, is in the RAF reserves and he has been given a compulsory uh, notice of 40 hours where he could be called up and deployed anywhere in the country. So we both, um, you know, could well be working, both of us in the front line, um, in some form or another. And, you know, the fear is that we either take it into where we are going or we could bring this virus home to our families. So there is a lot of fear about for um, for a lot of us. And it's been something of a reminder this week to trust in the Lord, which seems such a simple thing to do. But in times of trouble, it can be so hard. And that's when we need to claim our faith. So to trust in the Lord, that he will bring us through and not to fear the virus, but to fear God. And lastly, uh, in verse 18, and it says, The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. And as we know, the coronavirus has touched our very own fellowship and our hearts go out to everyone who has been affected by this. And I've also been reminded this week of uh, of an old favourite song, When peace like a river attendeth my soul, when storms like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to know, it is well, it is well with my soul. So remember, we have to trust God, to fear him, and he will carry us through.